I'd like to work another example now where, again, we're going to stick a fish in a bathtub. And we're going to again use the technique of uh, uh, equation for using a spherical refracting surface. But if we have a fish in a bathtub, which is actually something we talked about a little while ago, just drawing uh, ray diagrams and uh, try to, to draw a picture to explain what we would see. Uh, now we're going to try to use equations to, see, to predict what we would see. But actually, the fish in the bathtub is a, just a special case of a refracting surface. This water line right here, if it was assumed to be a perfectly smooth uh, uh, bathtub of water, is just an example of a, or a special case of a refracting surface, a spherical refracting surface, where the radius of curvature is essentially infinite. So we're going to go back to our expression n1 over p plus n2 over i is n2 minus n1 over r, except we're going to let r go to infinity. A, 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 an object that's perfectly flat is approximately a spherical object where the radius is infinitely far or infinitely large. Just like we think the Earth is flat because we're standing on it and we don't see the curvature of the Earth, but that's just because r is really big. The radius of the Earth is really big compared to us. So what should I plug in here? Well, the fish is down here and where the light is originating. That's where n1 is, and that's the index of refraction of water that I should put in. And the observer, us, we are up here in the air. That's where n2 is 1. So we're going to put in 1.0 there. And we're going to put in r as infinite. So this whole right-hand side of the expression is 0. Because when I put, take anything divided by infinity, it's going to be 0. So now I have just two terms. I have n1 over p plus n2 over i is equal to 0. If I bring one of these over to the other side and uh, and take the inverse of both sides, I have i is equal to minus p times n2 over n1. Now, p in these expressions is always a positive number. And n2 and n1 are always positive numbers. So I know that i will be a negative number, which means that the image will always be on the same side of the water line as the fish is. It doesn't actually go out here on the real side. So this is the virtual side down here below the water line. This is the real side up here on the upside of the water line. So the image distance came out negative because this is a positive number and these two are positive numbers. Furthermore, since n2 is less than n1, this is the index of air and this is the index of water, the image distance is less than p because I'm multiplying by this ratio which is going to be a number uh, less than 1. So I know that the water makes the fish look closer to the surface than is the actual location of the fish. So first two things I learn, i is less than 0. It's a virtual image. In other words, the fish is appearing to come back here. And since n2 is larger than n, or excuse me, uh, smaller than n1, the image distance is shorter than it really is in real life. Or the, the image distance is smaller than the object distance. So we would, if we try to reach in with our hand, reach into the wrong location and try to grab that fish because we would reach into a location that's too shallow.